everybody, welcome to the Jeff Vance Show. I'm Jeff Vance. Joined with us today is the one, the only, Bobby Jean Brown. Hey, what's up? She's live and in person, right here in uh, Louisiana. She's back home. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. For those that don't know Bobby Jean Brown, we're going to jump right into it and uh, get you guys up to date before our big comedy show we have coming at the end of the month. Um, woot woot. It's going to be a good time. Yes. Um, we're going to have a blast. Yeah, it's going to be very fun. Yes. We have lots of comedians. Uh, it's it's going to be from top to bottom, probably, I think, five to six comedians. So it's going to be a good time. Yes. Um, so, Bobby. Yeah. Where uh, did this all start for you? Um, well, my mom conceived me. There you and go. And then uh, okay. you're talking about entertainment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, in, I'm a Louisiana native. I was uh, Miss Teen Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, didn't win. I was second runner up. And then, you know, the, the guy goes like, so what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was like, a model. And uh, then I got some calls from L.A., and I flew out to meet with them, signed with the agents, and then when I graduated high school, I drove out to LA and I lived there ever since until COVID hit. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so COVID actually brought you home. COVID brought me home. So that's cool. And then a stalker drove me out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I moved back again <laughs> this past March. Nice. Yeah. So glad you're back. Thank you. Uh, we're going to try and be stalker free this time. We are. We are. Um, so uh, doing the, the modeling and everything in L.A., yeah. how did the, the music video stuff kick off for you? Um, it was a job audition. I guess Janie saw me on Star Search. So okay. I booked Star Search first. And um, that's another thing I didn't win. I won more times than anybody in the history of that show. But lost the hundred thousand. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> it, it was aired the most, and yeah. Janie saw the show, and uh, they called my agent, and I didn't go to the audition. Hmm. And they called my agent again and said she didn't show up. And they were like, "They're at Jerry's Deli right now in studio in Studio City. You have to go." So I was like, "Okay." I just threw some jeans on, walked in. Didn't know that this was a, a thing that Janie. Did not like. I walked in, didn't know who the guy was, but took a fry off of his plate and sat down. <laughs> and literally, they all looked at each other and went, you're hired. <laughs> um, and I was like, okay, for what? What are we doing? Yeah. You know? And he's like, oh, well, I wrote this song. He was super shy. Um, and I was just all, like, eating off his plate. He was just like, ah, mortified. <laughs> um, and Niven, Alan Niven, who was the guy producing the video... Who, by the way, I did not like. And he showed up at my second book signing and went like, do you remember me? I oh, know I'm getting off topic. No, but, no, you're fine. And I was like, ew, hey. <laughs> um, he said, I wrote the song Cherry Pie, and I, I think you'll be perfect. Will you do the job? And I was like, sure, no problem. So they gave me a cassette tape of Cherry Pie. I listened to it on my way home. I had like a little Miata. So I was like, okay, cool, cool. And it was a three-day shoot, and um, there was a lot of stuff that, I was like, I am not doing that. I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. Like, get naked in a, in a tub of whipped cream. I was like, nope, nope. Right. And then the they, they told me about the the hose at the end. You know where they spray me with the fire hose, and uh, they use a real freaking fire hose. Holy cow! Right. So let's just say that was a one take moment. Yeah. Because it felt like my face was peeling off. Like it just hit oh. my face, 200 miles per hour, and I turn away and I was like that's it that's it for that you know wow yeah so there were some scenes I didn't do there were some moments I can when I see the video where I go like I was so pissed off in that scene right I you could tell to, I like, can back, they can't like, but I was like oh I was so mad right there like I remember what happened like, yes yeah, yes yeah, but cool. I remember Janie sent me roses to the set at the time I was dating Matthew Nelson and um and he sent me roses and then did the Howard Stern show and said, hey, Matt, I'm sorry. I'm going to marry this girl one day. And, of course, Matt thought, you know, I had cheated or something. Yeah. But it all worked out the way it was supposed to. Awesome. Yeah. That And that was just one of many music videos that you've been on, right? Well, the first one I ever did was Hurricane, I'm On To You. Okay. Um, and then the second one was Cherry Pie. Then I did uh, 
Cecilia, it was like a one-hit wonder. It was a copy of an old song that this little pop duo did. I can't even think. Times two. <laughs> I did um, Great White. I did, um, what's that song? Ma, ma, ma. Once Bitten, Twice Shy. And I did their album cover. And then I did the second single off of that album. And then I did Terrence Trent, DRB's video. Um, I think that was it for rock videos. I think that was it okay. for uh, the rock videos. Yeah. Well, you were actually on that uh, Once Bitten, Twice Shy cover, cover, mm -hmm. but not the Cherry Pie cover, correct? Correct. Ah. Correct. See? Yes. I know my Bobby too, bro. Oh my goodness. Um, Thank yeah. you. So, uh, yes. <laughs> just to clarify, she's not on the, the Cherry Pie one, but Once Bitten, Twice Shy. That's her. That's me. Um, so that's pretty cool. And yeah. the, the transition from all of that into... Uh, rock star relationships. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a whole different world, I'm yeah, sure. It um, is. But out of that, you um, you have an awesome daughter. I mean, she's the best thing I've ever done. Right. I and, mean, uh, yes. It's it's pretty cool. Y'all had a podcast, and I think you're restarting the podcast. Yes, the podcast was called Southern Fried, and we never it wasn't scripted. I would just have her come over, and we'd be like talk like we always do and it's I mean I think I'm hilarious she's more <laughs> hilarious we have a I'm very blessed to have a family that has a good sense of humor right because it can also seem antagonistic to people like our sense of humor is a very kind of like mm, poking the bear type of vibe mm -hmm. but she gets it and my brother gets it and uh, so she and I would just have a conversation and it would just turn into like crazy talk people were like you guys are freaking funny yeah. so we did that um, and now we're going to revamp that we're going to we're bringing it back talked to very them cool. yesterday so we're going to have Southern Fried again and the email if anybody has any requests or questions is southernfried225 at gmail.com so that's coming soon very cool yeah. very cool excited about that yeah um, your, your TV fray though you did get to uh, how many was it a season or for XYZ of Rock it was four seasons okay. total um, and it was ex-wives of Rock but these were all women that we all knew each other back when we were married to these rock yeah. stars. And it's not about who we were married to. It's like this, so many seasons later that we're all still friends. Yeah. And we support each other. And it's like, it's a very pro-female, like, bonding. Like, that we're still there for each other in spite of all the stuff that we were married to, did, experienced, and all that stuff. So, it's a great show. Um... It only went for four seasons, but we are... Only four seasons. Only went for four seasons. <laughs> it's worth watching, though. That's a whole lot of seasons. <laughs> it was the best job I've ever had. I never got past the pilot, so, like, you had four seasons. Oh, yeah. You never got so, past yeah. the pilot of x of the Rock? No, no, no. Not oh, your oh. show. I was like... Oh, oh, in my... my venture into Oh, it, it was, I gotcha. Yes. I was on a pilot. It was terrible. Oh, my goodness. But I, also... Yeah. I've had many terrible pilots, so don't, yeah. don't beat yourself up on it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's cool. Mm -hmm. That was a, a big transition for you. And I guess that got you on kind of the whole, um, maybe I have some story to tell. And you started writing? Actually. Was it before? Oh, actually, I was promoting this book for, gosh, 10 years before it ever came to light. Like, I knew that one day I was going to write a book. Okay. I just knew it. So I would do interviews and be like, yeah, I'm writing a book. <clears throat> And I was, in my mind, my life was like a, a, this fascinating story of, um, you know, the trials and tribulations of being in Hollywood. And um, so I was writing it and writing it, and then Ex-Wives of Rock happened, and the agent saw an episode. Okay. Flew in and went like, I got, you got this. Like, I got this. So, yeah. yeah, one of the episodes was this guy who was really ripping me off, saying he was writing a book. And when I got the draft, I was like, what the heck is this crap, you know? Yeah. And somebody saw that episode, Simon and Schuster, mm -hmm. and went, let's do this right. And it came to be. It was almost like I spoke it into creation, into, into fruition, and it happened. That's awesome. Yeah. 
And it's there's um is the audiobook the same book or is that like two separate things? So I've written two books. Okay. Um the first book is Dirty Rocker Boys. You can get that on Amazon or through Simon Schuster and I record the audiobooks myself. Very cool. Yeah. And so it's a it's tricky though when you write when you write a book with a ghostwriter like and this ghostwriter Caroline Ryder was amazing. Like I interviewed with three they took one hour interviews with me and I remember what they would send back to be like, oh, I want to do this. And I was like, this, that person didn't get me at all. Right. What the heck is this? And then that Caroline didn't even sound like you. At all. You back, yeah. yeah, because I wanted the book to sound like a conversation with a friend. Right. So it felt, it was personal. And it was, and she got it. Like she got me and she was so good and I love her to this day. And so she helped me co write the second book as well. But I brought her in on that one as well. Um, but the first book, when I had to go record the audiobook, it's one thing to tell somebody your stories and then her to translate it, right? Yeah. But then I go into the studio to record it, and all of those feelings actually landed on me in those right. moments that I'm, like, reading it for people. And you can hear when I'm, like, getting, like, choked up or <laughs> sensitive or right. when I'm, you know, like, I felt all the feels because... She did a good job. She did a great job, but, like, it was also me. It was, what's it called? Um, cathartic. It was cathartic. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. For sure. It's one thing to write it, but then when you say it out loud, yes. a lot of times it's harder. Yes. It's just oh, like a conversation with somebody. Yes. It's like sometimes yes. when you're emotional, you can't speak. Right. But you can write it down. Right. It's passing note. Exactly. It's way easier. Exactly. It's awesome. So yeah. check both of those out. Um, and those both on Amazon. Yeah, Dirty Rocker Boys is um, is on Amazon. Cherry on Top, I do not promote because um, I still haven't been paid from that Ooh. Rare Bird book lit. There you go. So I don't promote that book. People can read it. I'm fine with it. It's cool. Uh, however, um, Simon Schuster <laughs> pays me appropriately, and the second go. book I don't really promote. So Dirty, Dirty Rocker, Rocker Boys, Boys yes. is what we're trying to say. Yes, is what we're saying. Uh, yeah. Definitely check that one out. Um, the books are really cool. And one thing that I'm really interested in um, is seeing some stand-up. How did the stand-up comedy thing come to come to a head? Okay. Let's see. So in my so in my 20s, I auditioned for The Groundlings. Okay. And The Groundlings, if people don't know anything about comedy, is really the base of where a lot of Saturday Night Live people who graduate and go to and the audition was probably it was probably one of the hardest auditions I've ever gone to because they don't tell you what to do they just go up they give you a situation and you have to you know it's kind of like what's what's my line type of thing and um, I got into the second level okay. with my audition nice. to the groundlings okay however I was dating a musician Nobody we need to mention <laughs> who told me I was not funny, so I quit. Okay. So cut to 30 years later. I'm exaggerating. I don't know. I'm 53, so you do the math. I'm never, never been good at math. Right. No problem. Yeah. We don't do math here. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Good. Um, <laughs> so cut to years later. Um, it was like on my bucket list, right? Yeah. I was always like, that was the one thing I wish I wouldn't have like listened to somebody and t to tell me who I was. You know, or what I was good at. Yeah. And I did that a lot. Um, I never trusted this, you know, voice, this mm. inner voice. And so um, my brother had just had his first baby, Oliver, with his wife, Laura. And they lived down the street from me. And I went to go see this child every single day. And he and he, we, I mean, my world, like, right? Because I didn't get the chance to be the kind of mom I wanted to be with my own child. Mm -hmm. Um so now this new baby's in my life. And then they tell me they're moving away. I was like, what? <laughs> I thought, I'm going to go dark. This is it's about to get real bad. I'm on the fence. Yeah. I'm here, but I feel like I'm about to go here. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do the comedy thing, right? Because I thought it would fulfill me or sustain me in a way mm -hmm. that it didn't end up doing. It didn't, but it was something that I checked the box off and I tried and um, I loved it, I did well, I did horrible, I did, you know, it just depends, right? Never know how it's gonna go. 
And uh, so I tried it, and I had to ask people, like, oh, yeah. But I always did comedy, like, in a way that I thought people would think was funny. And my friends and my daughter were always like, you know what? You're so much funnier when you're just yourself. So I was doing it in a way that, like, I thought was funny. So this this new comedy show that we have coming up, mm -hmm. plug where it is and what day. Uh, South 73 Lunchroom. That's going to be October 26th, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be a whole new, it's a 360. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm really just going to come out there and just be myself and just bring it. That's, it's going to be that's, fun. That's one of the best things to do. And that's yeah. what I was so interested about is that you have done comedy. Mm hmm and knowing that you uh, went up and you did well sometimes and you did bad sometimes, mm -hmm. it's a combination of the two. And it's the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Like, doing bad is terrible. Right. Doing good is so good. So it's like right. neutralizing and figuring it out. It's Yeah. And I did I did it like, I, oh God, it was so crazy. I went to a, I took a comedy class. In class mm -hmm. two, he was like, oh, you're ready. And I was like, what? You crazy? Like I'm not doing that. What? Are you insane? So, and it was like the at the Laugh Factory and like um, the Comedy Store yeah. and the Dojo, like these huge venues. So, I had to learn. I had to learn my lesson. Uh, he was like, "What are you trying to recreate the wheel for?" Like I would go out there, and every single time I do a performance, I would like try and do a new one. Every single instead of like perfecting one. I would yeah. just try a new whole thing because I was like, well, I don't want my fans or my friends to get bored. I don't want them to have to, like, know what I'm going to say next. And he was like, uh-uh, that's not how you do that. So there were times where I really <clears throat> bombed. Mm -hmm. And then there were times where I didn't care and I just delivered and it was awesome. I feel like I bombed, like, when I did the main room of the comedy store. Oh, and yeah. he had me, like, open for the headliner. I was in no way prepared for that. I will say that. And well, when I performed here, that. same. Yeah. But I was so pissed. You know, or when they put me up after the headliner. Oh, yeah. And yeah. everyone leaves. And I was like, what the? And I've been there for four hours. I'm like, what the hell, man? Those like, are great. That, but yeah, <laughs> these are all learning. Learning learning experiences. And yeah. It's not the. It's not an easy job to it's, make people laugh. It's not. It's not. It is And one of the best lessons that I learned um, just in doing this has been... Finding your routine, your set, mm -hmm. and using that one set, just yeah. making it tight, 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 right. and then you just tore that one set everywhere. You right. don't have to have a new set, because the thing is, your friends and family aren't going to be at each one. Right. And when they do come back, all they're going to do is be like, oh, I know the punch to this. Right. And then that creates merchandise. And then you have a tagline. And there you have it, guys. That was your first comedy class from Jeff. There you go. <laughs> There it is. Jeff and uh, Jeff and Bobby. We'll be on tour yes. this year. Come see us. Jeff and Bobby. Cherry Pie Comedy. Yes. There you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's it's a, it's a learning experience. It but is. One of the best things is the, the community we've kind of created here mm -hmm. is so acceptive yes. of everybody. I mean, always. They just want right? to see new faces. They don't really yeah. care too much that you're not Dave Chappelle. Or we're not, I'm not Joe Rogan. Bald, yes. Short, yes. <laughs> Not Joe Rogan, but um, nobody can be Joe Rogan except for Joe Rogan, that's and that's okay. Very true. We're good. We're fine with that. We're fine. Um, but uh, it's it, it's a learning process, and I think you've got the right mindset. So I'm I'm excited to see what happens. Yay! I'm um, excited too. Yeah. So again, we're gonna plug our comedy show. Let you guys know that we'll be at uh, South Seventy Three Lunchroom. We'll be doing a VIP hour beforehand. Yes. If you want to get VIP tickets. If you love love some uh, Bobby Brown, that that's definitely the way to go. The Getting VIP. Getting to know you. Whoa. She'll do singing for a whole hour. And I'm super good uh, at singing, <laughs> as you can tell. Me 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 me. <laughs> that was me harmonizing. It'll, um, it'll be fun. We're having a meet and greet. You can go say hi. Uh, we'll do a Q and A if you mm -hmm. have any uh, those crazy questions that yeah. we didn't. I didn't ask here because we're not going to do that here. Yeah. You want those questions answered. you got to come to the VIP session. And no question is off limits, just so you know. Hey. You can ask me whatever you want. Shoot your shot. Shoot it. <laughs> I'm here. It's your chance to ask her out on a date. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, oh right well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Hey, this is the place to do it. <laughs> come get your VIP tickets. Yeah, uh, VIP tickets. We're going to do 
photos. We can take selfies. I'm going to sign 8 by 10s to yes. you. Personalize them however one, whatever one you want. And uh, you can ask me whatever you want. You can buy merch. You don't even have to do that. You can just come and stare at me awkwardly from across the room and be like, eh, Or it's whatever. South 73, so it's going to be right in front of you. Yeah, so it's I mean, be even this better. close, what, are we this super far, awkward? We'll we can be like super this. Awkward. Yeah. We can be like super weird. We'll, we can do that. Yeah. We'll do that there October 26th at South 73 Lunchroom. But again, VIP tickets. We're going to have a photo booth. You can take pictures with the one and only right here. Uh, I'll be there too. I can wave at you from afar um, while <laughs> you're. You'll taking... be the guy photo bombing behind us, like yeah, awkwardly. I'll be the awkward one. <laughs> I'll be more awkward than you. Just make it more comfortable. Uh, just come have some fun with us. It's going to be a full comedy show too. So yeah. we have uh, Isaac Kozel who runs uh, Stone Drunk and Sober. It's yes. the touring comedy show in New Orleans, at Lafayette. He's going to be our headliner. Uh, we also have Maggie Shipley, who's. Uh, who's opening for Bobcat Goldthwait and oh, wow. uh, uh, what was it? Maria Bedford Cool. Uh, this cool. weekend. So she'll be there. Uh, we'll also have Maddie uh, Kime. She comes from Mississippi. She'll be there also delivering. She's won some roast battles. So Whoa. she'll be fun to play with. Oh, it's going to um, be on for sure. And T. Ray Bergeron, who is the GOAT. He won a... I was on Sweden TV with him not That's too long cool. ago. So... Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Come by the show. Come yes. get some tickets. And uh, follow Bobby. She has new social medias. Uh, Southern Fry 225 on Facebook. Southern Dash Fry 225 on Instagram. Uh, you can get the book. The book is on Amazon or just Messenger. Uh, Southern Fry 225 at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you can go directly to her agent at go to events at gmail.com. Also, if you want the, the blue check makes you feel better about life, uh, the Bobby Brown, at Bobby Brown on Instagram and at... No, no. Well, at Brown Bobby. Brown Bobby. At Brown Bobby. <clears throat> we can't do math or read here. We're dyslexic. Yes. However, <laughs> at Brown Bobby on Instagram and at Bobby Jean Brown across all other social media platforms. Please come out and see us. We're super stoked. We're going to have a great night. I'm going to open the comedy show and it's going to go great. Come have a meet and greet. Meet and greet us, be awkward, <laughs> photo bomb it, and uh, come out and have a great time. Laughing is better than any form of therapy. Absolutely. And little birdie told me that South 73 Lunchroom is putting together a cherry pie dish wow. just for our event. Wow. Uh, so uh, <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun. Y'all come see us, and thanks again for tuning in on the Jeff Fan Show. Give it up for Bobby G. Brown. Woo!